Hey, what's up, Instagram? Future here. I think I have nailed this streaming setup thing. So, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about uh, how not to stream your DAW. Uh, I think it's time for a little update because it's Corona time, you're at home, you probably want to stream shit. So, let's take a little look at my temporary streaming setup. Now, a huge disclaimer here, a lot of this advice is really bad advice, uh, <laughs> definitely things you shouldn't be doing uh, if you have the means to do it in a proper way, but nonetheless maybe it will give you some inspiration or some ideas with the gear you already have and it might help you out uh, if, if you're in a pinch. So let me just first give a little bit of a disclaimer, look at this guy. Epos Fox, he knows a lot about streaming, he does amazing videos about it as well. So if you want actually good advice, this dude, look him up. He knows how to do this stuff way better than I do. But nonetheless, I hope this helps you a little bit. So let's start off with the challenges. So the first challenge is we want to actually use a door uh, running in ASIO mode. This is of course important because you want the lowest possible latency. And part of the challenge here is that many DAWs will not like it, uh, like to share the resources if you put it into ASIO mode. So when you are running your DAW, uh, there's a big likelihood that OBS is not going to receive much of a signal. At least that's the issue I ran into when I was uh, trying to set this up before. Uh, so this is how I got around it. By using two interfaces. Which is interesting, to say the least. So what we have going on here is at the bottom is my Roland Rubik's. Let's focus please, thank you. Uh, four input, four output interface. And this is basically running as my DAW interface right now and we'll get into why it is this way around in a second because obviously the top interface, the PreSonus, is a way, way nicer interface to use. Uh, but yeah, we'll touch on that in a second. So basically what is going on here is the Rubik's. That's the one set up here in the DAW. Let me just quickly grab the settings again. There we go. So this is running ASIO from the Roland Rubik's at around uh, 11 seconds, I think. Oh, it's closed. Let me just quickly. So this is the issue. As soon as you start moving outside the program, it will close the interface. There we are. Yeah, 11 milliseconds. You can load that a little bit, but I think that's very acceptable. Uh, into this interface is also my JXA, which I moved down for the purposes of being in isolation. So that's going in there, and there's also a cable which goes to my bass guitar, which is right over here. So that's the front. Now, normally, these would be off the monitoring switches. So let's move to the back. This is where the studio light will come in handy, so just give me a second to turn it on. There we go. So, down here we have the outputs of the Rubik's, remember, that's on the bottom. Going into the inputs of the PreSonus. And next to that we have two more jacks which are actually uh, the phone input of the phone outputs of the PreSonus, and we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, speakers, because they are pretty useful to have. And on the front, we also find uh, the microphone, which is in this case a Deity J3 microphone with a really freaking short cable. But I recently found out my extension cable actually is faulty. So this way it's without weird noises. 
whereas a longer cable would cause some issues. And it's actually long enough to work, so that's fine. And this is that loopback cable from the output of the headphones back into the inputs of the PreSonus. <coughs> Sorry for that. A little MIDI keyboard. So the DAW side, nothing special, just pick your interface and you can use it. That's simple. Now on the PreSonus side of things, and this is why I use specifically the PreSonus for this, is because it has a built-in mixer, which is very convenient because it allows me to mute the microphone. Oh, that's extremely loud. <laughs> I was expecting some feedback, but that was way louder than I anticipated. Uh, right, sorry for the headphone users. Uh, and next to that, the output, I'm not going to unmute this one because that's probably going to kill me. <laughs> uh, it's also muted. And this is actually used for the Skype feed. Uh, that was really freaking loud. <laughs> Did not think about that very well. So what we have going on in OBS now is we have our desktop audio and our desktop audio is actually just our line out from the PreSonus. So this will take care of anything you load outside of the door. So let's just quickly, uh, Spotify is tricky. Let's just quickly take one of these videos. Today, we're gonna revamp my Twitch channel. So this is going straight into the desktop audio. Today's video is brought to you by me and my... Oh. Let's not make any more commercials for this guy. As much as I like him. Um, down here we have our uh, input for the microphone. Which is the instrument. Yep, focus please. There go. Like instrument line in. So that's this... Uh, Deity converter I have. You can use any broadcasting mic that's uh, XLR as well, of course. This is just the mic I happen to use, and it uses this little converter. And at the bottom, we have an input that's called Rubik's, which isn't actually the Rubik's. It's again the Presonus, but we are now using the output from the Presonus, and that's going or the inputs from the PreSonus that are uh, being fed by the Rubik's. So that is the little loopback cable construction we have going on here out of the Rubik's into the PreSonus. So anything that's outputted by the Rubik's gets fed back into the PreSonus. So any DAW sounds, so for instance this is a piano, I'll quickly put up the DAW, here we go. Uh, so, this, our piano is being fed into this little Rubik's thingy. So that's basically our audio setup. A bunch of loopback constructions. Now there was another loopback from the headphones out here into the personas itself, which seems a little bit odd, but actually if you want to use um, Skype, it requires an input. Um, it cannot send your outputs, which is pretty annoying because this could have been a lot easier if we could just take the output from OBS and use it as an input, but it can't. So I'm using our line input seven and eight, which are actually just the headphones output from the second headphone output. So that's what you're seeing there. So if I'm talking, this is actually the D83D3 currently spiking. And I'll switch to playing a few notes on the piano. So that's captured fine as well. And if I put back my video here and I'll skip a little bit to skip the commercials. At 6 p.m. or so that's where we use this loopback cable, so we can actually use our uh, live stream sound and video in Skype or Zoom or anything like that. Uh, 
So that's the sound department fixed. And the reason, by the way, why I'm doing this uh, Skype thing in this way is uh, because you can only use the camera, which I'm going to move to next, in one program at a time. So I've chosen to use it in OBS and this also allows me to make a Skype call and show everything I'm doing to the Skype call as well without the Twitch streaming delay because otherwise we'd have to direct them to Skype or to OBS to see what I'm doing which is awkward I think this should be better uh, it would be nicer to have a way to split the camera feed there might be but this is what it is right now so on to the camera department uh, you've seen this one so this is not a good streaming camera at all it's the Nikon D7100 so it has a few upsides which is it has a clean HDMI out which is good um, but you don't have much in a sense of live uh, autofocus because the autofocus is pretty well it works <laughs> it isn't great so the way I work around that is actually using a uh, remote which I can reach from my chair so I can just set my focus point roughly where I need it to be sit on the chair push the button get into focus uh, obviously this limits me in movability because if I want to move around a lot I'll get in out of focus all the damn time uh, it's a sacrifice I make because this is the camera I have and I'm not going to spend more money on getting this thing to work and admittedly the image quality is really good also that's a cool strap right I like it anyways so camera what do we have going on here right now we have a trigger cable for the autofocus trigger also some markers to see where the camera should stand and it's running into a Elgato. Uh, it's an uh, HD 60s Plus, which may be slightly overkill for this purpose, but on the bright side, I could always use it for game capture as well because it's 1080p, uh, 60 FPS, and admittedly, it works really, really well. Uh, let me just quickly, whoops, scoot back into my chair. Now setting up a capture card, there's a million videos about them. Basically it's installing the drivers, installing the uh, Elgato capture software. This will make it pop up as a webcam. And then it's as simple as just adding a webcam. That's it. Nothing exciting, very easy. My a mess. But you get the ID. So that's... The camera department so <coughs> at this point you might think we are done we're off to the races we can now officially stream our sound and our picture and that isn't exactly true first off uh, you might want to consider lighting now interestingly enough uh, against all odds by the way the lighting here is fairly decent so if we turn off this light so I just have this light and I think I already set up a full screen. Actually I haven't. That's interesting. And I thought, oh, I've reversed it. There we go. Uh, so this is terribly overexposed. There we go. This is the normal exposure. So actually this is not all that terrible at all. So this is a fairly small room, so there's a huge wide wall here that works as a bounce light. And there's a few spotlights on the ceiling. So, and there's also a mirror there, so that also helps a little bit of course with bouncing the light. So actually, the light is pretty okay. Um, I'm actually tempted to just leave it at this. But you can always add some uh, small LED lights. Now, if you use lights like these, these are pretty bright at the lowest setting, actually. Let me just... Did my battery just run out? Yep, my battery ran out. 
that's what happens when you don't prepare your videos very well. <laughs> so basically, if you're going to use one of these, use a diffuser, aka a piece of paper, because this light is way too much uh, at this range. I mean, basically, it will be sitting here or something, and it will be hitting your face really hard, so you may want to diffuse it. Uh, if you happen to have a room with fairly okay light, don't bother, uh, because really, it's just fine. Um, so are we done with light and sound? No, still a no. Because when you set this up, uh, just like adding all the elements, so you add your Rubik's or all your stuff, uh, and you start recording stuff and you start playing stuff, you'll quickly notice that things get out of sync. In fact, they will be out of sync. Now, uh, I've measured my delay using uh, a very rudimentary technique, which is uh, actually just recording the stream, loading it into Vegas, and on the stream just like a simple clap and check where your sound is and where your image is. Now, for me it worked out to around 330 milliseconds of latency. So that's what I put in to all the delays, aside from the Nikon because I don't use the sound of the capture. And then it's a matter of actually delaying your streams because your camera will be your zero time and all the other screens should be 330 seconds later, which can be done with a filter. And this filter is called render delay. Type in your number, 330 milliseconds. And now your entire stream will actually be delayed because your entire screen is your door capture. But this will be 330 seconds late. This will be 330 seconds late. And your sound will be 330 seconds late. So everything is in sync. So that's basically the madness you have to go through to get this thing to work. Um, it's not a very elegant solution. I mean, I would advise you to probably not do it exactly like this, because first off, this is an expensive interface with way more capabilities than I'm utilizing right now. Uh, you can probably pull this off with like two scarlets or something, uh, but this is what I have laying around. Also, don't buy a fancy big DSLR, even though like Linus Tech Tip says you should. Uh, if you are going this route, get something with decent autofocus. You can try a Panasonic GH4 or something like that, or even better, a compact camera. And uh, also a 35mm lens might be tricky if you don't have much space, because it's, it's pretty far away, actually. It's hard to see. This is at eye level. So you can see it's pretty far away. It's very out of focus as well. There we go. <laughs> so you need a lot of space to do that. Uh, preferably just get a webcam. Uh, it's way easier to set up and it works just as well for your basic needs. Uh, big issue being right now, all the webcams are sold out. So yeah, <laughs> that's why I got here uh, in this weird situation. So, that about concludes my breakdown of this audio setup. Uh, it's probably not going to be incredibly useful for a lot of people, uh, but it should at least give some insights into the issues you will face when trying to live stream a DAW. Um, and hopefully give you some answers to things you may want to try to get these issues resolved. Uh, so that's it for now for me. I'll just end the video here. And if there are any questions, uh, please ask. But first and foremost, check out uh, some videos by professionals who actually know what the hell they are doing, like this guy. Uh, and if you're nice enough, he may invite you to his Discord for further questions and he can help you out even further. So there we go. No promises, of course, there. Just be nice. It helps. 
uh, that's it for me. Video's been running way too long. See you around. Bye bye.